Hi everybody. I'm sorry I can't be there at the conference with you, but Maria asked me to send a little video beforehand uh, about the work that we've been doing on daydreaming in the brain. Um, and what we're basically finding is that uh, it so happens that the brain operates by networks. Um, so many, many labs have now shown that we have an alternating set of networks that allow us to both look out into the world and gather information about the things that we're doing, the things that we perceive, the people we're interacting with. Um, but then there's another network that allows us to turn inward and kind of let go of our attention into the world and indulge ourselves in sort of free-form, task-independent thought that allows us to think about things that aren't in the here and now, to reflect upon who we are as people, on uh, uh, futures that we can imagine so that we can make them come true, um, to reflect upon the ways in which we integrate and make memories out of the things that we've experienced. And what we're finding is that in the brain, it's really incompatible to uh, both pay attention into the outside world and to pay attention into this sort of inside meaning-making world at the same time. So you kind of intuitively know if you're driving along in your car and daydreaming and thinking about all the things that you've learned at this wonderful conference, um, you, you're sort of on autopilot driving along home and not really paying a lot of attention to where you're going and what you're doing. You're just kind of doing what you always would do to get there. Um, and you can be thinking and making deep meaning about um, the things that you've learned. But then the moment a truck pulls into your lane or something happens on the highway that grabs your attention, you snap out of that reverie and you start attending to the world and you're not making deep meaning at that moment. And we need both of those systems. And in fact, uh, what the research is showing is that it's the health of that trade-off mechanism of your ability neurologically to kind of decouple your internal experience and pay attention into the world and then decouple from the outside world and pay attention internally that is allowing us to make really rich meaning and ethical meaning about uh, our lives, about the things that we experience. And so um, the implications for this, for child development, for example, or for people's use of social media, are potentially quite profound. What it suggests is that by pulling ourselves into the outside world and into these little snippets of conversation that interrupt us continuously in our lives, we aren't potentially as neurologically predisposed toward making deep, rich meaning out of our experiences, out of our sense of self, or potentially to thinking about the moral and ethical implications of our and other actions uh, and, uh, and uh, situations in the world, uh, and being able to imagine possible futures that don't exist now, but that we would like to make come true. So these are all uh, granted to us as human beings by the power of our ability to disengage from the current world and make reflective meaning, um, and then to come back into the world and share it with other people. And so it's really important that in our lifestyles, we honor both of those mindsets, we think. The opportunity for children and even for adults to move back and forth into places of reflective quiet uh, and solitude even, and then out into the uh, world where we're engaging with other people and with machines and with exciting entertainment, um, that those two aspects of our lives need to be in balance in order for us to really have a rich inner self and a real sense of ethics and a real sense of the possibilities for the future.